So it's very clear after decades of brain research that addiction is a biological disease, that it does result from addicted the brain. to it's alcohol and crack cocaine. It was a long it time. It just kind of frees me from everything. Understand I have an eating disorder. This was true. I People am consumed by wanting to lose weight. I'm addicted to cocaine. All you of just go off into your own little world and you forget about the one you had. On the outside, but when you look at somebody who might have a brain, it's almost impossible for me to take it easy. In a disease all or nothing state, from is it really drugs too? It's all or nothing. When I'm really scared they have a die. Candace had the baby, the started drinking and partying, and it just never stopped. Uh, like <laughs> she has three beautiful children, and she's just throwing it all away. Weak heart, you know, and it's somehow their fault because of their biology. Um, so we now know that this is true, uh, that addiction is the result of changes in the brain. Um, treating it, how to reverse those changes, that's the focus of uh, much of the future work. Um, it does take a level of effort on the part of the addict. We can't treat. I carved don't eat into my hand as a permanent reminder. I swear to God, if she doesn't get help, I'm going to lose my sister. I've been putting it up my nose every single day now for a good three years. I have no other interests. I have no other ambitions. So I'm pretty high. She cannot control herself. Well, I'm, I'm coming up there. It's time to go. I wonder when it's going to end. <gasps> this is her last chance. My name is Angela Harrington. I have a Master's of Science in Professional Counseling and I'm currently a second year doctoral student in, professional, or in uh, Counseling Psychology. Uh, my name is Tara Leeworth and I have a degree in Health Information Management. Uh, I'm David Blinn and I'm an internal medicine physician who is board certified in addiction medicine and I work in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I do believe that drug addiction is a disease and basically because if you compare the brain of an addict to the brain of someone that's not an addict, you see how um, the addict's brain communicates with itself in a completely different way than the normal person. I do believe it is a disease um, for two reasons. One, it is a genetic uh, disease that can be passed along through families and two patients who use drugs can have changes in their brain which causes them to want to use more drugs. I believe that there is a genetic component to drug addiction um, so I believe that there is an aspect of the disease model in drug addiction. I don't believe it accounts for all of it though. I believe that there's psychological factors that contribute to the development of a drug addiction as well. Um, but I do believe that there is a genetic component that will increase one's likelihood of developing a drug addiction. Um, I think that um, where you live may determine what drug you try. Uh, patients in more affluent areas may try different drugs than people in uh, poverty-stricken areas, but uh, all of these areas have uh, addiction as a disease in their population. So I don't think that environment causes more, uh, a bad environment causes more addiction. It might cause a different type of addiction. Basically, I mean, if you're in an environment where you're able where it's a lot more accessible, you're a lot more willing to try it and probably able to try it. I believe in the current state, addiction has actually gotten worse. And the reason I say that is because we live in a drive through world where people are used to a very quick I fix. think there are more people who have the problem of drug addiction. Uh, and I think there are more drugs available, which makes it worse also different things developing every day that people can become addicted to. I believe it's a combination of factors. It is, um, there's a psychological vulnerability, there is a biological vulnerability, and that combines with certain toxic environmental, environmental factors. Um, and then of course the availability as well. I think addiction is something that people carry with them their entire lives. 
it's sort of like cancer where it can go into um, like an idle stage where they might not be using the drug. However, you know, the person's body can forget what they were addicted to, but if it's introduced back into their body again, they'll immediately go back into the addiction and it's something that they just have to work on to control their whole lives. I do believe there is uh, true hope for, for these people, but um, they have to be the ones to seek the help. Nobody can do it for them. Um, external motivators may initially get someone into treatment, so for example mandated rehab by the courts, or a spouse telling a partner, um, you know, if you don't kick your drug addiction, I'm not going to be with you. That's an external motivator, and yes, it may prompt someone to initially get into treatment, but it's been my experience and my understanding from the research as well that um, the internal motivation is what really matters. And until someone has it, until they want to change for themselves, it's probably not going to be a lasting, meaningful change. Going to uh, rehabilitation programs uh, are very important. Going to group therapy, going to individual therapy, but most important, the 12-step programs of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and participating um, on a regular basis is the most important thing. Um, and without these things, then there's not likely to be any hope. But uh, with these things, uh, I think there's hope for everyone.